Hi, hello, and good afternoon. My name is Amanda, and welcome to Harmony Portal Tarot. For this Pick a Card reading, we are going to be getting a message from your subconscious mind. If you are new to Pick a Card readings, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to center your energy, and focus in on pile number one with the amethyst, pile number two with the turquoise, and pile number three with the peridot. Once you have selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamps, and I also pin them in the top comment. But please remember, these are general readings, so only take the information that resonates with you, your life, your situation, and just go ahead and leave the rest behind. Without delaying this any further, I'm going to give you a moment to meditate on your cards, and I will see you over at your reading. Hello, group number one. Let's go ahead and find out what message your subconscious mind has for you. We are just going to set these aside for a moment while we get some tarot here. We're going to be pulling three cards from the tarot. The first one is going to be the theme or the underlying energy of what your subconscious mind is trying to convey. The second card will be your challenge, and the third will be any advice your subconscious has. And of course, we will round out the reading with this oracle card and some additional guidance from other decks. So the first card coming out, the theme or underlying energy of the message from group one subconscious mind. Ooh, <laughs> very interesting. They're telling me to take this one and they're telling me this is the challenge. So look at that. We've got two of them. Now we need the advice from your subconscious. Again, too many. If that one was meant to be, it'll come back out. Here it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and find the theme or the underlying energy of your subconscious mind's message to you. We have the King of Cups. So it is time to become that master of your emotions. And like, what does that even mean? This is about allowing yourself to feel your emotions without allowing them to completely take over your life. So you're feeling them, healing them, and letting them flow through you rather than either pushing them down or away or allowing them to completely take control of your life. There's finding this nice balance here. But the cups really do represent also the subconscious or unconscious mind as well. So this is really tuning into that subconscious to get even more or further messages than you normally do. But a lot of times our creativity can also be found in this subconscious mind energy. So just really be tuning in. This could be through meditation, through your dreams, through daydreaming, just kind of going about your day and thoughts kind of come in. That could be your subconscious mind. Of course, a lot of entities will come in and talk to us through our mind or you know, spirit guides, if you want to call it that as well. Um, so let's see the challenge you're being presented with from your subconscious mind. Ooh, we have the fountain here from the fountain tarot. And I'm actually going to read this one out of the book because I've drawn this card before, but it's been a super, super long time. Um, so let's find out. So we have here the fountain. It says here, B. The fountain exists outside and beyond the cycles of birth, death, time, and form. It is the nameless, changeless source which everything is a part of. It is the waking from a dream of separateness and identity, the recognition of oneself as not only connected to all things, but all things divine nature. When the fountain appears in your reading, relinquish all illusion of control and remain quiet. It invites you to observe, master less, and just be effortless and indistinguishable from life. You are the voice and the breath of the universe. So oneness, a moment of cosmic clarity, fully awake, the end of seeking, enlightened being, surrender to that which you are, whole and perfect. Okay. So this really is just utilizing and tuning even deeper in to your subconscious mind. Maybe a lot of you are in your head, sure, but you are in the very conscious realms of your mind and allowing thought spirals to happen in this way. The challenge being presented here is to just be and observe what is coming up or even to go into meditation or your daydreams or whatever it is that you're doing and really dive deeper. Again, though, without attaching any seeking to it, you're just being in the presence of this deeper dive. So it's kind of a weird, like a double-edged sword kind of energy that you're being asked to do here. And I think maybe that is why it's coming out in the challenge here is that a lot of us want to analyze and know all the answers to everything and dig even deeper. 
but this is basically saying that the more you just allow things to be as they are, of course, you're taking action to change things you don't want to be experiencing or to move from one version of yourself to another. But at the same time, just in the stillness of being and observing is where the answers are going to come to you, which again, it's, it's a very nuanced uh, answer to this question. So let's go ahead and find out the advice from your uh, subconscious mind. Ooh, Wheel of Fortune. So things are definitely changing for you. But to me, this feels like an unexpected change. The advice is maybe even to change your ways or unexpectedly you're finding ways to change how you show up in your own life. And I'm looking up here, I'm realizing these are all crooked the whole time. <laughs> but this is just that reminder that life is just never predictable and change is inevitable and always necessary. Because if we remain the same, we would all pass away almost instantly. We need to keep uh, breathing in and then out and then in and out. Life is this series of cycles. But with this Wheel of Fortune here, this is letting you know that you are about to have a random encounter with chance and the outcome is completely unknown. So. The advice here, again, is just to be open to anything happening. And a message that keeps coming through in my readings is believing is seeing. We always hear seeing is believing, but this is kind of the counter answer to that of believing is seeing. So your advice is just to be very open-minded and know that if you are going through something you don't want to experience, that this too shall pass. But at the same time, there's a lot of what you're meant to be experiencing but just observing rather than trying to fix things or change things or shift things. Things are always doing that anyway, but it's you kind of being, yes, maybe guiding certain actions. This is such a confusing message because it's almost like I'm giving dueling advice, which it sounds like, yes, we, in the physical realm, we are taking action, but in the more subtle realms of the subconscious mind, we're more observing and allowing things to flow to us or with us so that we can then take action. So I hope that decoding of this message is making sense to you because um, it's a very, I don't know, you guys must be very intellectual because I think you guys want to dissect everything. Um, you want to know all the mysteries of life, the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and everything in between. And I'm, I'm right there with you guys. I totally want to know everything. But sometimes there's a beauty in just the unknown or not knowing all the answers and not needing to know all the answers. And I know uh, me with a Mercury in the eighth house in Taurus, I need to know on a practical level, why everything is happening in my life. So I totally get your pain if you're like, but I wanna know. I totally get you guys. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get some Oracle cards here. We have the card you use to select your pile, which is Metamorphosis, and the number 34 here. So the number 34 might be following you around, but the Metamorphosis energy is, this is a more a, a metamorphosis of your subconscious and unconscious realms. And allowing that to unfold in a more physical way. Obviously, the metamorphosis is a very physical thing, but the innate intelligence of the subconscious, the unconscious, the God spark, whatever you want to call that energy that turns the caterpillar into goo inside the chrysalis, that is what you're facing. But again, it's not that you have to try to control that more subconscious process. It just happens. It just is natural. It's, it's nature, right? So the caterpillar isn't trying to dissect, you know, every little piece of why this is happening, but the caterpillar is then following through with those inklings or those nudges from within to form that chrysalis, go within, allow itself to dis disintegrate into goo, and then reassemble itself with that innate intelligence. So yes, there's an action taking place, but a lot of what's actually happening is on a more subtle level. Again, I hope this is making sense to you, but as you go through this metamorphosis, you really are coming into deeper and greater understanding. So the thing you want most, that deeper, greater understanding is coming to you, but it's not coming to you through your mental thought process and, you know, try to take action on, I need to know this, I need to know that, I need to know this. It's almost just sneaking up on you. I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's go ahead and get another message, just any message from the subconscious mind. Ooh, we have my aura is magnetic to golden opportunities. And again, as you go through this metamorphosis, this is how you are becoming more magnetic to the things that your innate intelligence, not so much your conscious mind, but that innate intelligence that runs your physical body is directing you toward down certain paths or um, to line up with certain experiences that just seem so far fetched or just unrealistic in this like conscious mind of ours. But this is like, miracles at play in your life. All right, what else does 
group one need to know a message from their subconscious mind? Ooh, too many, but we will take this one that I saw. There she is. What is it? What is it? Ooh, look at this, a bee. What is mine to share with the honeybee with Sweeten? So you're finding ways maybe even to share the wisdom of your subconscious mind with other people in some way. Because again, you guys are very action oriented toward your learning process or your growth process. But this is also seeking, you know, what is yours to share? Certain elements of what you experience in life maybe are just to, you know, yours to keep for yourself and not to share to others. But there is a lot of beauty and love and gratitude you can share with the world through your actions, you know, acts of service, um, kindness, love, gifts to those that you love, you know, things like this. This is how you are showing up and maybe sharing the wealth of knowledge, wisdom, material abundance, especially if you are bringing in some sort of money. We've got, to me, I read these little rainbow comet thingies, almost like coins. Um, and let's see how many we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, yeah, that's a very philanthropic uh, six of pentacles energy here. So yeah, wanting to share the love and spread the wealth um, and not just hoard it for yourself, but find a nice balance between what you bring in and what you put out. Um, giving and receiving. This is another message coming through. Okay, I think I want to get one from this deck as well. Um, a lot of these are, you know, uh, goddess and god energy. So I want to just see what archetype you are kind of embodying on a more subconscious level at this time and any wisdom from that archetype. Ooh, we have Hathor with soul family. I love it. And Hathor is such a heart-centered being or archetype to work with. You don't have to physically work with, um, you know, an entity that you label as Hathor. This can just be you embodying the archetype of the Hathor energy, the heart-centered energy, wanting to share, but not at your own detriment or your own expense. You're not pour pouring from your almost empty cup. No, you're filling your cup up like the fountain and allowing the overpour. I love that connection there with the fountain card. Allowing the overpour to be what you're giving to others, not from your you know, cup, not depleting your own self, but specifically with soul family connections. Be these friends, family, um, you know, uh, your team beyond the veil, whatever that looks like to you, connecting from the heart, because the heart is a portal, the heart chakra is a portal, and we really are meant to connect to people from our heart in a much deeper way than a lot of us do day to day, but it's much easier for many of us to connect heart to heart with our soul family or a deep soulmate connection than it is with just some average human or Joe on the planet. Okay, let's go ahead and get some additional messages, anything that ties in with what we're already talking about or just some additional guidance from your subconscious mind for group one. All right, we have here, bird perched, waiting for news, package or letter. And yeah, there's kind of that being energy of just waiting. Um, again, you're taking action on the things that feel pertinent and using your intuition to take action when the time is right. But for many of you, the time isn't quite right yet, but your aura is magnetizing these opportunities to you. So as you live your best life and go through your metamorphosis and share the love with those that you have a strong, deep connection with, that is when your news, your package, your letter, your opportunity is coming in. We also have here younger woman, dealings or relationship with a younger woman. So you could be calling in a younger soulmate. Uh, this could be like a soul sister energy or for those of you who are attracted to the feminine energy and are single, quite possibly a love interest. We also have here torch. So spiritual development, enlightenment, awareness, and understanding. So with the help of your subconscious mind, you're coming to a deeper understanding because the subconscious mind remembers and it has that like blueprint or stamp from every lifetime you've been in, not just this one. And that's why past life regression is possible because the subconscious is like, like a storehouse of energy and information of everything you've ever experienced ever, everywhere, all the time, ever. <laughs> So you guys really are developing and learning, maybe even releasing some limiting beliefs. One of the big metamorphosis, metamorphosi, is that like the plural for metamorphosis? I'm not sure. Uh, but one of the big things I've really been evolving in my own spiritual practice with is um, just the new age trap that so many of us when we first awaken get caught up in because it feels 
you know, 70, around 70, 71% is kind of the number I'm tuning into um, of the information in the new age is true. It's cr correct. It's accurate. But then there's that 29% that is completely skewed and pointing us to false light matrix, false light construct to basically hijack our ascension. So if you have been yourself caught in the new age trap, which I'm still, I mean, I'm sure all of us are in some way caught in it because we can't no, you know, again, maybe that's why so many of us are searching and seeking and wanting to know. We can't know what's truth and what's false. I mean, it's just almost impossible. Even when we tune into our hearts, there's so much false and misinformation out there that it's just so beyond confusing for most of us. And I think that's why the message coming through from your subconscious mind is to just let it be. Do what feels best. And if you are caught in some sort of false light matrix or trap or, you know, communicating with spirit guides that are the false light or whatever it is, just know you can you can still come back from this, whatever it is, because you're on a path, you're on a mission to shift yourself from one version of yourself completely to another, completely to another. There's at least four stages of this, you know, four stages, the egg, the larva, the pupa, and then the, the butterfly or the insect stage of the metamorphosis of the insect life cycle. So much like that, you know, those of you that have awoken, you know, spiritual awakening, and then you awoken into this version of like a new age uh, trap or a new cage, <laughs> new age, new cage. Um, maybe some of you are finding your way out of that cage. And not to say the next thing we find ourselves into isn't yet another trap set for us. We just don't know. But that's the beauty of, and of course, maybe the curse of the human experience is we don't know. We don't know. On a deep, deep level, we do, yes. But on a more human level, it can be very difficult and almost just maddening to not have the answers that we so desperately want. If you, much like me, have been really just very disenchanted with the New Age movement and just wanting to really tune into your own inner guidance rather than spirit guides and anything that's outside of you, of course, we can all come and... Um, you know, talk to each other and have those heart-to-heart -heart connections and maybe even get some validation through other people. But it really is our true inner light, true inner guidance that is our best guiding light in this life. So I hope you did get something from this reading group one and it didn't disenchant you even further or just make you wonder like what's even the point of being here. My goal with all of my readings is to empower you and help you know that you are a sovereign being and you can experience pure bliss in this life, but it, there's a lot of crust and a lot of yuckiness that we just have to dig through to get to this beautiful inner light within us. And it is there. It is there. I know it is. That's one thing I know for sure. We are limitless. It's just about uncovering all the yuckiness around it to get to the truth and to get to the heart of who we are on a deep, deep soul level. So I hope that message resonated. Please feel free to let me know below. If you want to start a conversation about any new age traps you've fallen into, or if you're like, wait a minute, I've never even heard of the new age trap. I thought that was the way, the truth, and the light, uh, or, you know, or whatever. Just let's start a dialogue in the comments. If you completely disagree with me, that's even fine too. I'm totally up to hear your point of view. Uh, so let me know below. And thanks again, you guys, so much for your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and your donations. They really do help me keep this channel going and I appreciate them, but yet they are never ever expected. My link for my PayPal is down in the description below. And I really truly do hope to see you group one back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys, bye. Hello, group number two. Let's go ahead and get a message from your subconscious mind. And we are going to be putting this aside just for a minute or a moment. Um, let's go ahead and get some tarot in the mix. And we're going to break this down into three parts. So the first card we're pulling is the theme or kind of the underlying energy of the message that your subconscious mind has for you. The second card is going to be the challenge that you're facing with this message from your subconscious mind. And the third card is going to be your advice from your subconscious mind. All right. So the first card is your theme or the underlying energy of the King of Wands. Group one got the King of Cups. So there's, there's this energy of you guys also reclaiming your power, reclaiming your sovereignty in such a big way. But the King of Wands is that very passionate king and he is 
the leader who turns the impossible into the possible. So some of these big grand ideas that you might have, you're still wondering, how am I ever going to make this thing happen? And I'm now seeing myself writing the book that I'm writing, my uh, young adult, well, it's not just one book, it's a four part series with two companion novels, but they're showing me writing this book. And at first, I'm like, how am I ever going to know the right way to write this book or, you know, everything that needs to happen in this book. But you know, I just trusted I just started. And the next thing revealed itself, the next thing revealed itself. And before I knew it, I had a first draft. And then before I knew it, I was revising that first draft and making it better. So this is about taking those divinely inspired ideas and not just inspiring yourself and accomplishing things for yourself, but also inspiring so many other people. But whether your goal in life is a spiritual goal, a physical goal, a mental or, or emotional goal, anything that you are putting your mind to at this time or you believe in or are feeling passionate about, you are motivated about, it is happening because you are taking major action here. But beware because achieving this goal isn't necessarily your objective. It's being in the action is what thrills this King of Wands. And sometimes when this happens, you know, we have this big goal and then we complete the goal and then we almost have this like grief period of, oh my gosh, now what? So this is about enjoying, uh, you know, the destination once you get there, but also really enjoying and knowing that the journey is just as valid as the destination. So let's go ahead and find out the challenge before you. Ooh, we have the six of pentacles, six of coins. So the major challenge you're facing here is balance, is stability, security, with um, the energy of your give and receive. So your divine masculine and divine feminine are probably out of whack, out of balance. Many of you are really, I'm seeing it kind of split about 40-60. 40% of you are very attuned to your receptive divine feminine energy, but it's very difficult for you to finally uh, take these beautiful ideas you have and then take action. But the other 60% of you, you're very action oriented. It's very difficult for you to pull back and rest and receive. So wherever you fall on that spectrum, um, your challenge is to get yourself more back to the center, back to balance with the divine masculine and divine feminine aspects of your self. But this also does talk about your relationship surrounding your prosperity or lack of it, not just in the, like the material, like physical cash money, but also in your connections with other people, feeling disconnected from your friends or family or very too connected, like, you know, codependent. So again, it's about finding this nice balance between codependency and interdependency for many of you, whether this is in relationships with money, with material wealth, with your mental thoughts, just not being too dependent on um, even outside criticism, because a lot of times we can believe others over our own inner voice and this you're being asked to really come back into yourself. So the advice also, that was some advice, I would say. We got a little bit of advice in your challenge, but let's see the actual advice. Knight of Wands, okay. So it's very interesting. It's almost like two steps down from the King of Wands, but this is just embodying that I don't know everything. Like the King of Wands sometimes can get a little arrogant if we're being honest, but just balancing that out with um, kind of that beginner's mind. Yes, you're taking action, but you're also knowing that, okay, I need to rest now and it's not time to just keep going. If you're feeling depleted, if you're feeling tired or let down in some way, it's time to pull back your energy and balance it out. But also the advice, you know, the Knight is of Wands can be very restless if they're not busy and in action. Yes, they know they need to step back and take a time out, a breather, but their mind is very restless. They're in, you know, idle hands. It's like, ah. So the advice here is to be not only kind to yourself, but kind to others, especially if you are feeling a little listless, a little restless, a little anxious about the future or about the past, just wondering how is everything going to come together. Just know that you can take action, but also um, you're embodying this very charismatic version of yourself. But again, just balancing that out so it doesn't go into complete ego and just knowing and having faith in yourself, again, without it becoming too boastful or too um, over the top, but at the same time, not self-deprecating either. Okay, let's go ahead... Let's see, what card did we start with in the other group? I think we started here. That's what we did. Yes. Okay. So Sacred Boundaries is your card. And we have the number 34 here, which adds up to seven. So specifically surrounding your belief systems, your spiritual life, your wisdom, your inner guidance, having some very strong boundaries and knowing what to share and with whom and how much and why and when and where knowing what to share of your inner environment. Again, finding a nice balance between oversharing and sharing just enough. 
but also having great physical boundaries, especially with people who are, you know, talking against you or you don't really um, resonate with so much anymore. This could be looking like a major detox of your like social media or your subscription feed on YouTube. That's something I recently did um, yesterday. I did it a couple weeks ago and then I did another big purge yesterday of just things that don't really align with me anymore, resonate with me, channels, and not that these people are bad or in any way, and maybe again I will subscribe again, but just right now doesn't feel like the right time where my energy is completely aligning with certain creators, and that's okay, because as I've cleared that out, it's almost like uh, the universe is working with me, and now I'm being suggested new creators that I'm just totally alive with um, vibrationally. I'm just like, whoa, yes, this is totally like on my radar right now. And it's it feels good. So sometimes we have to clear a little space to make room for that new stuff. And your sacred boundaries, saying no to one thing will then allow you to say yes to something else is really what I'm seeing with that message. All right, so any other messages from Group 2 Subconscious Mind? We have here, I make way for miracles. What were we literally just saying? Sometimes you got to clear out that space to make room for the new. And it just blows your mind how in sync or in tune with this, you know, current version of you. When you let go of those past versions of you or things that really resonate with you in the past that no longer resonate, you clear those out or, you know, say goodbye, let them go in whatever way that looks like for you. That literally opens the door for this new stuff to come in. And I just said that. And I just love when this all lines up like this. I don't think I need to say much more on that. It just basically is allowing you by clearing out, setting proper boundaries, saying no to certain things and allowing this brand new energy to jump right in. All right. What other wisdom does group two subconscious mind have for them? Guidance, clarity, messages. Whoop, I just dealt that upside down. So we have here, I do accept myself without judgment with the earthworm and the word breathe. And of course we dealt that upside down. I'm gonna place it upright, but maybe that's something you guys have been struggling with is accepting yourself without judgment. I know that's something I have through many, many years worth of work really worked to get myself in a good place. I'm not perfect. I don't think anybody is, but comparing how I judge myself now compared to two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, even 20 years ago, huge leaps and bounds, huge leaps and bounds. So you might be even doing some uh, looking back or a mini life review of how you no longer judge yourself in certain ways, or you just accept yourself unconditionally in ways that maybe you didn't in the past. And that is sometimes when we can really see how far we've come is by just kind of looking back to do an anal like an analytical report of our past to really see how far we've come. And also this goes for other people not just ourselves, but other people. But I think most of us, we judge ourselves way more harshly than we even judge, you know, the people we don't like or, you know, whatever that is. But the word breathe here is very important. Allowing that life force of the breath to come in and really tuning into your breath in whatever way that feels good to you, whether this is breathing exercises, whether this is yoga, whether this is meditation, whatever this looks like. I'm, I'm seeing someone even swimming, like, you know, you bring your head out of the water every now and then to take a breath, whatever this looks like to you. This is the key to really allowing yourself to accept yourself without any judgment. But there's a lot of movement in the breath. It's the in and the out, the give and the take, the in and the out, the above and below, the inside, the outside, right? Um, so yeah. All right, let's go ahead. Um, I was talking in group one about the new age trap and all of this, how we can all, when we awaken, we just go right into this new cage or new age trap. Of course, those of you that love the new age, you study the new age, you're in the new age, like I'm, there's no shade. But for me personally, I'm trying to work my way out of it as much as I can. I know there are still concepts that I need to deconstruct within my own, um, you know, psyche and inner guidance to separate the new age from true reality. Cause a lot of the new age is pointing us into this false light matrix to basically hijack our awakening. And what I have said for this deck, cause there's a lot of God and goddess energy here, a lot of archetypes. So if you do not want to physically pray to these entities, you can just embody this archetype. It's basically like uh, trying on a costume. So whatever resonates most, whether you want to channel these guides or actually just embody the archetype of the guides, that is your prerogative. Oh my goodness, this came out in group one. <laughs> so it's, it makes sense why I'm going back to group one to talk kind of similar, but not quite exact to what I told them with this card. But yeah, this is about helping you connect to your soul family, connect to your true guides, not the a lot of guides that we channel or connect to. We think 
just because someone's presenting themselves as Archangel Michael, that that is a benevolent being. We don't know. And that's what I was talking about in group one is we just on a human level, we don't know. But on a deep subconscious level, there is that innate intelligence that we know. We know what we're truly connecting to. And for a while here, I've just, I don't know, uh, I know that any true guides or angels like of, of the true source creator light or any soul family, galactic family, whatever that looks like, of the true light, I know I could never be disconnected from them. But any false light, I can absolutely disconnect myself from. And what I've been doing personally, and maybe this is something you can do, is just instead of trying to tune into a spirit guide or something outside of you, really try tuning into your own inner guidance, that inner self, not even a higher self, because a lot of times we can think that this higher self is somehow above us or outside of us or like way far away that we could barely reach it or see it or feel it or be involved with it. But if you just tune into your own inner self, a lot of times it is through that heart portal that you can tune into your light, your soul that is beyond the veil as well. That you are a fractal of the infinite source. So are any spirit guides or angels or crossed over loved ones. Um, so really tuning into your inner self is tuning into God, is tuning into your true guides. And it will completely bypass the system of the false light matrix of these so-called spirit guides. So whatever resonates most for you, if you really do feel this deep connection to your spirit guides, you feel they are of the true light, then please continue to do what feels best for you. But many of you are like me at this time and just really deconstructing any new age concepts that you fell into. Like I was saying in group one, just doing tuning into my own inner guidance, I'm picking up about 71% of the new age practices and beliefs and what's told is 100% true. And that's why it resonates so deeply with so many. But then there's that other 29% that is false light construct, you know, new cage, new age trap, whatever we want to call that, that we are digging our way out of many of us who awaken and just go right into the new age movement. And then we decide, no, 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 this is just, this is still putting my power outside of myself or that savior complex that a lot of us that left religions are trying to get away from. And then we just fall right into this. But this is bringing that power back to ourselves, knowing that each of us is a fractal of God or source or, you know, whatever you want to label it or not label it, wherever we come from, we are each a part or a piece of that. So remembering that and knowing that you don't need any middleman to get you there. You already are it. Wow. Powerful. Okay. So I think many of us in the spiritual community are really questioning a lot of these new age practices right now. Not to say it's all garbage, not to say only 29% of it needs to go. That other 71% is great. And you know, we, that's why we, you know, fell into the trap in the first place because they have to, you know, tell us the truth, but also they mix it in with lies. So let's see any other messages from group two subconscious mind. We have here love, soul family, love, heart portal. Yes. And then chair empty. Someone is leaving your life and it could be someone or something could be your belief systems, could be versions of yourself you thought were real and true. Again, you're allowing those to leave so you can make way for the true soul family, the true love, you know, a true friend, whatever this is for you, but you, many of you on a subconscious or even conscious level at this time are examining your relationships, your belief systems, just how you show up in the world. Too many cards, but we'll take this one. And then tankard, celebration, fun, and enjoyment. It's leading you deeper into your enjoyment because a lot of us stuck in that new age, we, many of us are just in a one consecutive dark night of the soul that just doesn't end. And that is not a good feeling for any of us. We do enjoy or deserve to enjoy our lives and have fun and enjoyment. But tuning into your own inner child can be a way of healing a lot of this, uh, you know, just dark night of the soul that many of us go through when a whole belief system falls out from under us. And then we're like, now what? Now who do I pray to? Now who, I, who do I get guidance from? Now what do I do? Now what do I do? But it's through the now what do I do that you just tune in to your own inner guidance that the, oh, the doors will be opened as you slough off and let go of the things that are not serving you. That's when the doors start opening and you can walk through into what is true and best for you by setting those sacred boundaries, allowing what needs to go to go and what needs to come in to come in. I hope I didn't lose you somewhere along the way. Like, what is she even talking about? Now I'm completely like 
confused and I don't know what to believe anymore. Uh, welcome to the club. Yes, we all know that there's something greater than this 3D reality that many of us experience. We all know that on a deep cellular and soul level. But so many of us get confused or, you know, just don't know, like, who am I even communicating with when I communicate with spirit? Um, where do I go when I die? You know, all these big questions we have. It can be very easy to almost just feel overwhelmed or depressed by not knowing those answers or just trying to have the faith that, what is meant for us will come to us and what needs to go will intuitively know to let go of. But that is your message group too. I hope it resonated. I didn't lose some of you along the way. Um, my, my goal with every single reading I do is to um, help you empower yourself and to tr tune into the true light and release any false beliefs or let go of any false light constructs that are you know, plaguing the whole planet. But, you know, as we awaken further and further, we start to see through the illusion, through the veil, even of, again, like the new age or new cage, if whatever we want to call it, we're starting to see through these things. And I'm sure me even speaking about these things is going to put me in trouble again. But this message is just too important to care about how it's going to affect the algorithm or views or subscribers. I just, I'm, I'm over it. I don't care anymore. Um, I just have faith that the universe, the God, you know, whatever we want to call that an infinite intelligence is going to get these messages to whoever needs to hear them. And that's just going to have to be what it is, regardless of anything else. So I love you guys. I just I hope that um, if you have any questions or want to vent or talk about any of this in the comments, please feel free. Um, I will be available in the comments just to see um, anything you guys want to talk about, about all of this, and let me know below what you're thinking and any stories you want to share. And I want to say thanks so much for your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and your donations. I'm unmonetized, and all of your donations really truly do help this channel. And my PayPal link is in the description below. Never ever expected, but always highly and greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, Group 2. I love you, and I hope to see you right back here at Harmony Portal Tarot. All right, you guys, bye. Hello there, group number three. Let's go ahead and find out a message from your subconscious mind. Wow, these are already going super deep and I am here for it. Uh, we're gonna put him aside for just a while here while we deal out the tarot. We are getting that message from your subconscious mind in three areas. So we're gonna do the theme or kind of the underlying energy. Then the second tarot card will be your challenge you're facing or your subconscious mind is presenting you with to overcome. And then the third will be your advice or wisdom. And then we'll get some oracle in the mix just to round out your message from your subconscious mind. So the theme or underlying energy for group one, or sorry, group three, we are on group three, but maybe you were also connected to group one or hear from group one. If so, hello. You already know how this went, so let's continue. Uh, for the second card, the challenge that is being presented to group number three and the advice from group three subconscious mind. All right. Get these all laid out neatly here. So the first card, the underlying energy or the theme uh, that your message is going to be revolving around. We have the seven of wands. Wow. Okay. This just really falls right in alignment with what we were talking about in the other two groups. So this is such a collective energy and my heart is leaping with joy right now that this is a collective energy because this is something we all need to know. Standing up for our beliefs or allowing certain belief systems to fall away is such a theme right now for the collective and again, like I said, I cannot be more happy because there is so much false light entity interference with our spiritual awakening, with our, you know, ascension process, whatever that looks like to you, um, that we are overcoming this, or at very least having the awareness that it's happening, because we don't know what we don't know. But when we don't, when we do know what we didn't know before, that is where our power to reclaim our sovereignty, reclaim our power comes back to us. And the thing I was talking about in the other two groups was the new age movement. And a lot of us, when we very first awaken, we we just fall right into the new age movement because I tuned in and I see about 71% of it is true. It does resonate deeply with our soul because it is actually true, factual information. But then there's the other 29% of that 100% that is false light, it's lies, it's deception, it's putting our power outside of ourselves or giving, you know, these other saviors outside of us control or power over the direction humanity or the ascension process is going. But you guys are reclaiming your power with your belief systems. Or maybe for some of you, 
shedding certain beliefs that are just no longer, you're putting your hand up saying no more. And as you claim this Ace of Wands, this inspiration to shift your paradigm or your belief systems, you're getting a Six of Wands, which is a victory after a hard spiritual battle. So wow, you guys are getting so much victory by examining your belief systems because a lot of our, any, any belief system we have basically acts as a cage because if we believe this one thing, then that makes this other thing for us unbelievable. But if we can open our mind and take ourselves out of these cages, uh, specifically with our subconscious mind, a lot of our subconscious or unconscious beliefs really do act as a cage in our lives. And it's really overcoming those subconscious beliefs that is really going to be what helps us break out of the matrix or, you know, the false light constructs, whatever that looks like for you personally. Um, so let's see the challenge. Ooh, we have strength. And that is, you know, when the strength card comes out, you know, this is supposed to be a lion, like in the traditional Rider weight depiction. It's very, um, I don't know, it reminds me of like Mayan face paint or Mayan masks or maybe even Aztec. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know a lot about either of those cultures, to be honest, but that's what my inner guidance is bringing through is the fact that this is past life stuff, past life persecution vibes or past life when we did speak our truth, something bad happened because we were not supposed to speak our truth. I mean, we were on a soul level. Yes, absolutely. But, um, you know, in the world that was created, no, 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 you can't say this. You can't say that. You can't. I mean, does anyone else resonate with that? Because, I mean, that's happening in the world right now as well. It's it's never ended. Every lifetime we've gone, we, we can't say certain things or, you know, we're silenced, we're stifled, we're persecuted, whatever that looks like. But the challenge here is tuning into that inner guidance and not getting guidance from everyone out there or, you know, spirit guides or all of this. This is bringing it back to your inner guidance. Because if you think about it, and this is something I've, I mean, I was all on the spirit guide wagon, you know, even very recently. And not to say that we don't have spirit guides, that we don't have guardian angels. Yes, we do. It's just so much of what we think is our spirit guides and our angels and, and stuff are like false light. They are presenting themselves as someone or something they are actually not. But how you reclaim your own power with this is saying, I only connect to the true source creator or, you know, whatever label you want to put on that energy, whatever it is that created everything. That is how you can trip the system and completely avoid having to connect to anything false or outside of you. And the way out is in by going within because we are each a fractal of that source creator. So you don't need your answers from these outside of you spirit guides and even calling it a higher self. A lot of times we think it's something above us or outside of us or very far out of reach. So just tuning into your inner guidance, your inner self, that is the way that portal of the heart um, is the way back to source, back to home, back to where we all come from. And you can avoid a lot of this external noise by just tuning into your heart center. And I know a lot of us have like, you know, heart walls and um, a lot of wounds surrounding, you know, putting ourselves out there and getting, you know, resented or sorry, rejected is the word. And then we start feeling resentful and we start putting up walls around our heart. So the challenge here is to deconstruct a lot of those heart walls and uh, energetic cords around our heart and letting go of anything that is not serving us and our actual true highest good um, for our true soul's ascension. Letting that go, tuning into your own inner voice is the biggest challenge for many of us. Many of us can't trust that inner voice because we're like, well, am I just saying that because I want that to be the case? Or do I feel this way just because of X, Y, or Z? And we can feel so confused even just in our own, you know, insight because a lot of times our minds will get involved. If you can bypass the system of your mind and go directly into your heart or even lower into the solar plexus of your gut, that is where your true innate intelligence is found. So for some of you, that's going to be a challenge to really tune in. But I challenge you, group three, to do what you need to do because over here it says you're almost there. So many of you are on the precipice of some major changes here to the way you show up in your own life and the way you reclaim your power, reclaim your sovereignty so that you can really serve your truest purpose in this world. So the advice coming through. Look at that. Yes, the magician. Yay. You're reclaiming your sovereignty. You are literally creating your own reality here outside of the false light construct. You are checking yourself right up on out of that and deciding, no, it's my time. This is my time to shine. I'm taking my power back. I'm doing it my way. But again, the challenge is what is my way, right? So it's about figuring out your way. And then the advice is following through on your way.
but the magician always will reveal possibilities. This is not a given. This is just potential possibility. He has the ace of wands, swords, cups, and pentacles at his disposal, but you know, they're just tools, much like a hairdresser. If they don't ever pick up those scissors and learn how to cut hair, it's just a tool. It'll just sit there and it really serves no purpose. Um, but once you learn to utilize the tools at your disposal, that is when the magic really starts to happen. But this requires more than just skill. They require faith in the unknowable. Because, you know, like I was saying earlier, we don't know the real truth of everything or anything. Like, we don't know what's false. We don't know what's true a lot of times. We can know what feels good or what resonates. But even sometimes it resonates for a reason that may not be in our highest good. So it's just like, it's about unraveling or deconstructing what is true and what is not true for us. But through discipline and surrender, you will become the connection between the earthly and the divine. It's not an easy road. This is not, I mean, you're group three. Of course, you guys, you know what you signed up for. This is not an easy road, but practicing and showing up for yourself day in and day out, day in and day out for the rest of your life. It's a journey. It's a process. This is not an overnight thing. But the more you show up for yourself, the more you can tune into your own inner guidance, which is the true guidance to bypass any of these systems that are just messing with you. Okay, let's see. Now from your Oracle cards, we have almost there. So, so many of you, like I said, are on the precipice, on the brink of having a huge epiphany in your spiritual, your physical, mental, emotional, and everything in between life. Just, you're almost there. There's so much that's lined up, your right place, right time. Something big is about to happen that is gonna blow your mind and blow things wide open in such a good way for you to reclaim your power, um, let go of any limiting beliefs that are holding you back, and finally create a stable and secure life for yourself in the physical world, but also really tuning in beyond the veil to the more spiritual side, the true spiritual side of what is meant for you, what you're here to do, what you're here to accomplish. So let's get some additional guidance from your subconscious mind. I clear my energy field, yes. And it's not until we really examine some of these belief systems or you know people we're subscribed to that no longer align with us or relationships in our lives that no longer serve or align or ways we spend our time, jobs we go to that suck our soul and our energy. It's not until we face these things and say no more, we claim this idea to change our lives that then the victory comes in. But as even we do this, we are in a spiritual war in this realm. Like it's just, it's a given. If you don't know that, there, it's, it's, that's a fact. I mean, that's one thing I think all of us know is there's a major spiritual battle, major spiritual war that's been at play on this planet for millennia, if not longer. It's just been going on nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And so many of us are caught in this reincarnation cycle of come back, come back, come back, come back. And yes, let's hope that this is the last life we have to live here and can overcome this. But for many of us, it's all about clearing and getting like conscious, not just subconscious, unconscious, but conscious about what needs to go from your energy field, from your auric field, from your life, what needs to go. But so many of you are almost there, almost to that point where you're discovering what needs to stay and what needs to go. And a lot of us, before we even know what's best for us, we start to know what we just don't resonate with anymore, what doesn't feel good. Even if we don't know exactly what does feel good, we know, ooh, that doesn't feel good, that relationship's toxic, this, that, and everything that doesn't feel good. And once we clear the way uh, of all of those things, that's when we open the door for what is meant for us, what we do want to come in. Very group two vibes here with that message. So maybe there's also a message in group two for you guys. But let's see any, oops, too many. All right, any additional, whoa, there it is. We've got the sun, which there are people out there that believe that the sun is not even real, that it's either projection or it's false or it's, you know, whatever, however you feel with this. Tuning in, even if you believe it's false, tuning into the true source sun, you know, the source of all that is, you know, God, creator, whatever that looks like, tuning into that light will help surpass any false construct or false lights. And I mean, it can feel so confusing to even know, well, I know I'm not supposed to connect with this or this or this, but like, where do I connect? And a lot of times the way to connect to anything is again, into your inner self through your heart, heart portal. So tuning into this would be your very best bet. 
but also getting out in nature is something that, you know, a lot of us, when we are lost in life, when we feel disconnected, that's when we can go on some sort of vacation and especially somewhere outside, somewhere out in the great outdoors, connecting and tuning in with the animals and mother nature that we start to really get the answers we've been seeking. So get out in nature if you can. I know at the time of my filming this, it is winter time um, in the Northern hemisphere, but you know, timeless reading. So whenever you're watching this, but even in the winter time, you can get out and enjoy nature. Okay, so this is a god and goddess card. And, you know, if you've been listening this whole time, you know kind of what's going on with some of these false light entities. But we're using this card. You know, you can use this card however you want. But I'm kind of setting the intention to use this card as an archetype you are embodying with your subconscious mind to help yourself with any messages that have come through or will continue to come through this reading. So we have here the Hakate energy or archetype with past life healing. Yes, having access a lot of times to your past lives, especially those that have felt that persecution life after life after life after life. There is healing coming in because you're almost there. And all of these like rainbow energies or waves here almost remind me of cords, cords to this life, cords to that life, maybe even fractals of your soul that were left in past lifetimes. But this is about you clearing your energy field and again, reclaiming your own power back to you. As you cut these cords, remove these cords, do the healing, you start to reclaim lost parts of yourself. And that's when you can really strengthen that connection to your inner self. So this is a very powerful thing you can do is some past life healing. All right. Ooh, we dropped it. Where is it? Here it is. We got two. And we got one more coming in hot. One more message from group three subconscious mind. Okay. So we have here beetle with good fortune. And with this beetle energy, some of you might have had a past life in ancient Egypt or Kemet, even Samaria, I'm seeing. We've got the skull, hidden secrets can harm you. Yes, the hidden secrets that you think you're doing right for yourself by praying to this entity or, you know, getting help from that entity or believing in certain things that are actually going completely against you, enslaving you even further. So this is about, and of course, skull. That's where our brain lies behind the skull, where we really start to analyze. But yes, it's, it's okay to analyze things, but you're tuning even deeper down into your heart center and your solar plexus to get the real truth of anything hidden from you and asking, asking your inner self and the universe, God, whatever that looks like for you to start revealing any false light that is in your life, any false light uh, people you're subscribed to on YouTube, false light people in your life, false light agendas or programs going on you know, just in your reality. And you will start to see these things or people or situations for what they truly are. Again, you're almost there. So many of you are already kind of intuitively feeling off about certain people, certain TV shows you're watching, certain ways you're spending your time and you're deciding to make a change and say, no more. I am clearing my energy of this, that, and the other and coming back home to myself. And then the last, the last one we have here is nest. An emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. And absolutely it is. And that's why so many of us are seeking, you know, soulmates or twin flames or, you know, spirit guides or angels, because we do want to feel that deep, loving connection to another. But the best way you can feel that with anyone else is to finally, and for the first time, some of us feel it within ourselves. Then we can start attracting the people who can connect to us on that deeper level to us. But many of us, we do feel this with our children, those of you that have them, or your parents, those of you that have them. I think most of us have parents or had parents to get here. Um, but there is an emotionally secure and loving family. Having that is important to many of you. Whether you have that or don't have that doesn't mean if you don't have it that you can't ever have it. You can and you will. But you're create. it could be a family you're creating, like a found family, like soul family, friends, co-workers, people out in the world that aren't, you know, physical blood family but you're making a, a soul family with these people. And it is so important to you to feel that connection with others. And maybe that's why some of you have felt very lost in this life and in past lives is because you didn't know who had your best interest at heart, who had your back. But knowing that you, your own inner self, has your best interest at heart, has your back. Um, the universe in and of itself has your back, whatever that looks like to you. But it's about finding your way out of crawling out of the dark of the false light and finding the true light of whatever 
is going on for you in this life. I did not expect when I started these readings that this would get, you know, as deep and let's break out of the matrix even more as it has. Um, so I hope this resonated for you. If you would like to talk about anything that we've discussed here, if you have any questions, I mean, I'm not like an all-knowing being, I will just put that out there, but um, sometimes it's great to get a dialogue going. Um, if you're confused about anything, if anything I said triggered you or you don't agree, please, you could share it all, of course, in a very kind manner. Um, let me know below, or if you've been kind of questioning some things as well, hey, just let us know below because a lot of times we do like to see that others are also going through the same thing. Again, it goes back to that feeling of connection, like, yeah, we're in this together. Uh, so let us know below, and thanks again so much for your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and your donations. Um, they are never ever expected, but always greatly appreciated to help my unmonetized channel keep on keeping on. So thank you so much, Group 3. I love you, and I hope you have a very blessed day. All right, you guys. Bye.